Hello students. In the previous session, we have discussed about the question and answers related to the to this chapter up to dielectrics. Now let us see the question and answers in the problems related to the capacitors. The next topic. Capacitors are very very important topic in this chapter. Capacitors are the devices which can store so much of energy, huge energy, and releases in a fraction of seconds. So because of that advantage, the capacitors are very widely used in fans, motors, cameras, etc. in so many electrical devices. So and the dielectrics which are used in capacitors about the dielectrics also is very very important. And about the dielectrics, we have a question already I told you. Uh, he asks to explain uh, dielectrics. Uh, about uh, to explain about the dielectrics that is a uh, one of the four mass question very important four mass question and related to capacitors we will have question and answers like this uh, he asks uh, to explain about parallel plate capacitor one question is there parallel plate capacitor he asks its capacitance capacitance to derive this one we have to draw the diagram and uh, we have to explain how it works and also the derivation related to this parallel plate capacitor and the derivation we will have epsilon r k by d is also very important formula which we will use for the problems also and relating to capacitor we have another question series and parallel combination of series and parallel combination of capacitors in this question also uh, we have to draw diagrams related to series connection and the parallel con connection of the capacitors we have to draw the diagram carefully along with the arrow diagram, arrow marks also. Our diagram is much suited for these two questions. And also, uh, not only simply writing for the series combination, we will get this formula. And for the parallel combination, we will get this formula. And also we have to write in words uh, the resultant uh, capacitance is equals to the reciprocal reciprocal of the individual capacitances for the series combination and for the resultant capacitance in parallel combination is equals to individual capacitances of the capacitors and also we have to explain the uh, series connection that means the circuit connection we have to explain uh, in the series either in the series or the parallel and for the explanation we will have one mark and for the diagram we will have one mark and for the other two marks we'll have we will have for the uh, derivative part of these two of these two and these will come under four marks question and also another question is also the energy stored in a capacitor energy stored in a capacitor this question is also very important these three questions are very very important four mass questions this is also a four mass question these three questions are very very important related to capacitors generally he asks these four mass questions and of course the potential at a point charge is also another important question dielectrics you will have totally six marks two marks uh, two mass question and two mass question and one four mass question will be from this chapter okay and the problems related to this chapter let us see this is one of the problem related to the capacitors the capacitors of capacitances 1 qf and 2 uf and 3 uf are connected in parallel he asked what is the ratio of charges what is the ratio of charges we have the formula q is equals to c v q is equals to c v here he he has 
connected in parallel this problem related to the parallel combination this so automatically the potential is constant the potential is constant so q is directly proportional to the capacitance that means the charge is directly proportional to capacitance this one is charge and this one is the capacitance so automatically the q1 he asked the ratio of charges so q1 1 2 3 3 capacitors are there so q1 is to q3 q2 is to q3 is equals to c1 is to as it is directly proportional to the capacitance is to c3 so what is the ratio of these three first capacitance is 1 second capacitance of the capacitor is 2 third one is 3 so the ratio of the charges is 1 is to 2 is to 3 and next he asked about the ratio of the potential differences potential difference in the parallel combination what is, what is the potential difference potential difference is constant so if suppose if the potential is 3 3 volts so the potential difference of another one is also 3 of another one is also 3 so what is the ratio between these 3 1 is 2 1 is 2 1 that is the ratio of the potential differences that is the ratio of the potential differences if he asks for the uh, for the in place of uh, parallel combination if he asks about for the series combination for the series combination the charge is equal for the series combination the charge is equal that means uh, the charge the ratio of the charges uh, will we will have for the series combination for the same question this is for parallel he asked and for the series combination the same questions will if it is for series for series here it will be for the parallel for the parallel combination the, the potential difference is constant for the series combination what is constant the charge is constant the charge remains constant for the series combination so what what about the ratios of the charges then the charge is constant or not q is constant for the parallel combination v is constant so what about the ratio of sub charges q1 is to q2 is to q3 is equals to 1 is to 1 is to 1 why because this is constant for the series combination and if c is constant then what about the uh, potentials we will have the capacitance is inversely proportional to v that means for the potential difference it is inversely proportional then what are the ratios of the potential differences will be um, the ratios of potential differences is v1 is to v2 is to v3 is equals to 1 by c1 is to 1 by c2 is to 1 by c3 so the capacitance the capacitance is already given 1 by 1 is to 1 by 2 is to 1 by 3 so these are the ratios for the uh, for the potential difference if they are connected in series if they are connected in series so for the parallel combination for the series combination you can solve the problem if this model is given okay so this is another problem related to the capacitor what happens to the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor if the area of the plates is doubled the area of the plates is double so area is double that means two times it increased uh, so we have the formula c is equals to epsilon a by d so for the same capacitor so this is constant so c is directly proportional to a then we can place c1 by c2 is equals to a1 by a2 so that is equals to C by V require C2. That means the resultant capacitance. So C2 is equals to C1 by C2 is equals to. If suppose the before doubling that area, if the area of the plates is A and 
area is double to this area double to this area that means 2a it increased before increasing the area it the area of the plates is a so it is increased by two times that means it is doubled this one is doubled so if this is a then what it is it is 2a this 2a so we got c1 by c2 is equals to 1 by 2 which gives c2 is equals to 2 c1 so what happens to the capacitor it also double it also double the capacitance also doubles as capacitance is directly proportional to capacitance is directly proportional to area of the capacitors okay and the next problem is so the next problem is 12 picofarads capacitor is connected to 50 volts battery and how much of energy is stored in a capacitor he asks we have the energy for the energy stored in a capacitor formula we have but he has given the capacitance of the capacitor is 12 picofarads first we have to convert that for 12 picofarads into 12 uh, into farads so the solution is he has given the capacitance is equals to 12 picofarads so 12 into 10 to the power of minus 12 farads 1 picofarad is equals to 10 to the power of minus 12 so 12 into 10 to the power of minus 12 farads we have to convert into first even if he gives microfarads or millifarads or picofarads we have to convert first into farads then we have to substitute in the uh, in the in the problem and we have the formula also for the energy stored in the capacitor u is equals to half c v square and also the voltage given is 50 volts and we have the formula for the energy stored in the capacitor half c v square now, now we can substitute these values half into the capacitance of the capacitor is 12 into 10 to the power of minus 10 uh, minus 12 and also uh, in, into the voltage is 50 volts so v square complete so v square so 50 into 50 v into 50 okay and now we will get by solving this 6 that is equals to 50 into 50 is 2500 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, so totally we will get uh, 6 into 5 into 5 so we will get 1.5 into 1.5 into 5 is equals to 8 joules minus 8 joules uh, the unit is also very important for this one the unit is very important 1.5 into 10 to the power of minus 8 joules and for the next question we have the work done for the dipole moment P in uniform electric field with P parallel to E if it is rotated by an angle theta if it is rotated by an angle theta the work done for a dipole is P e cos theta we have the formula work done for the dipole he has asked P e cos theta so it is rotated from 0 to from 1 theta theta to another theta from 0 to how much theta from 0 to theta so that is equals to P into cos 0 minus theta 0 to theta that is equals to P 1 minus cos theta number 2 is equals to P into 1 minus cos theta Question is now uh, if a hydrogen atom 
the electron and proton in a hydrogen atom the electron and proton are at a distance of 0.5 angstrom units 0.5 angstrom units then the dipole moment of the system is he asked actually here at the place in the place of the distance he has given 0.5 angstrom units that is he has given the a uh, distance between the electron and the proton that means between and the negative charge and the positive charge the distance he has given directly the distance he has given and also we have one angstrom unit is equals to one angstrom that to the power of minus 10 meters so we can place this one in the place of 0.5 he has given directly the distance to a the formula we have to place first for the momentum q into 2a is the formula for the dipole moment of the system p is equals to the charge of that of uh, Uh, of the electron and into to either of the charge either of the charges so q is the charge and 2a is the distance between electron and the proton so q is to a is he has given 0.5 angstrom units into 10 to the power of minus 10 meters we have to convert it into meters he has given angstrom units and next q is 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 Coulombs. So by placing these values, we can solve p is equals to 0.5 into 10 to the power of minus 10 into 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 90. 0.5 means 1 by 2 into 10 to the power of minus 10, and minus 19 becomes minus 29. Minus 10 plus minus 19. So minus twenty nine into one point six. So we can cancel zero point eight. So zero point eight into ten to the power of minus twenty nine. That is equals to eight into ten to the power of minus thirty is the answer for the electric uh, dipole moment. And sorry, we have to place the Units also eight into ten to the power of minus thirty coulomb meters. Coulomb meters. Okay, this is the answer for this question. The capacitors which are each of capacitors two picofarads three. And four pico farads are connected in parallel. He asked the question, what is the total capacitance? And second one is, what is the charge across each capacitor if combination is connected to 100 volts supply? And first one, let us see. It is connected in parallel, so the resultant capacitance is equals to the sum of the individual capacitances. What are the capacitances? Two plus the first second capacitor is four. C1, C2, C3. That is equals to 2 plus 3, 5. 9 farads. 9 picofarads. We can convert into farads also into 10 to the power of minus 12. 9 to 10 to the power of minus 12 farads also we can write. Or 9 picofarads is enough for this. For this one. And he asked the second question. The charge across each capacitor in the combination of these. We have for that for that one Q is equals to C V formula Q is equals to C into V. We have has given the voltage. How much voltage he has given? Hundred volts. So and the capacitances are not equal. So we have to place Q one is equals to C one V that is equals to two picofarads into ten to the power of minus twelve farads. So two into Minus twelve. Since C one is equals to two picofarads, and into how much voltage he has given? V is equals to hundred volts. So into hundred. So ten to the power of two. So ten to the power of two. Two into ten to the power of minus twelve into ten to the power of two. 
So do gets cancels here. Ten to the power of minus ten. So two into ten to the power of minus ten. What he has asked charge. So two into ten to the power of minus ten coulombs. And also similarly for Q two also we can have C two into V. C T is how much? Three picofarads. So three into ten to the power of minus twelve into hundred. V is hundred. V is equals to hundred. That is equals to three into ten to the power of minus ten coulombs. And similarly for Q three also, C three into V. Four into ten to the power of minus twelve into hundred. That is equals to four into ten to the power of minus twelve. Minus ten coulombs. Ten for the twelve. Ten to the power of minus ten to the power of two. It gets cancels with the ten to the power of minus twelve. So these are the answers for these three. See the question. An elementary particle of mass m and charge e. Initially, at a very large distance, is projected with velocity v. That means this particle is projected with velocity v at a much more massive part particle of charge j. That means the charge of one particle is e, the charge of another one is j. At rest, the closest possible distance of approach of the incident particle is. That means. Uh, it, uh, he asked the possible distance, closest possible distance of approach for that incident particle. For that incident particle. For this one, we have the equation U is equals to. That means the potential energy stored in the particle one by four pi epsilon naught into Q one Q two by R square. Sorry, R Q one Q two by R. So one by four pi epsilon naught into Q1, Q2 by R. In place of Q1, Q2, what we have? 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. In place of Q1, first charged particle is E. In place of Q2, Z into E. Another charged particle of charge Z E he has given. Of charge E he has given. So it Z E by the of distance D. Of distance d, so in place of r we have to place d. He has asked the distance or not. So, for example, for the distance we have taken d that is equal to one by four pi epsilon naught into z e into e z e square by d. And also for the particle, it will have some kinetic energy also. As it is projected with some velocity v, as it is projected with some velocity v, so of mass m, so of m v m v square. So from these two equations, the energy of the particle which it is uh, projected uh, with a velocity v of uh, with charges e and z e, and also the kinetic energy of the particle. Uh, is the kinetic energy is equal to half m v square must be equal. So therefore, from these two equations, from these two equations, one by four pi epsilon naught into z e square by d is equal to half m v square. So from this equation, we find we can find the closest possible distance or not. So that is equal to two ones. Two. That is equal to d is equal to remaining we have to take this side and we square into two pi epsilon naught by z square. So this is the possible distance we have. We can have. When it is projected with some velocity v of a charge j. Next question is, what is the work done in bringing a charge of charge he has given? How much charge he has given? Two into ten to the power of minus nine coulombs from infinity to a point of potential v he has given ten to the power of four volts. And he has asked what he has asked. Work done. 
So we have the direct formula V is equals to so work for the work V into Q. So by substituting the values of V and Q, we can get the value for the work. So he has asked what is the work done. So work is equals to V into Q. V is equals to 4 into 10 to the power of 4 volts into the charge he has given. How much charge Q is? Sorry, Q is equals to how much charge he has given? 2 into 10 to the power of minus 9 coulombs. That is equals to 4 to the 6 sorry, 8 into 10 to the power of 4 into 10 to the power of minus 9 is 10 to the power of minus 5. He has asked about so joules. 8 into 10 to the power of minus 5 joules. And also he has asked does work depends upon the path. No, work does not depend upon the path given it is from the infinity to a point. If the particle is from infinity to a point or from one point to another point, the work does not depend upon the path. Already in the previous class I told you work does not depends on path. Does not depend upon the paths. Only from either from the initial and initial to the final points are only important. And even we take the potential difference and of the energy difference, only the initial and the final points are important, not the, the, the path it, it follows. Why? Because the work it follows is conservative. Is conservative. From final to initial is equal to initial to final. So, so the work done is conservative, so it does not depend upon the path. So, if any question in any of the question asked, if he asks work depends upon the path, no work does not depend upon the path it followed from any point to another point. Only the initial point and the final point are important. That's all the cause. Even the potential difference or any other, if we have take, then also the work does not depend upon the path. The next question is, a spherical conductor of radius 12 centimeters has charge of 1.6 to 10 to the power of minus 7 coulombs distributed uniformly on its surface. He has asked three questions. What is the electric field inside the sphere and just outside the sphere and at a point 18 centimeters from the center, from the center of the sphere. So, uh, first, first, first question is uh, inside the sphere. Inside the sphere means inside a conductor what about the electric field? Inside the conductor the electric field is zero. So the electric field intensity is equal to zero. Inside the sphere electric field is equal to zero. Is equal to zero. Inside the sphere. Just outside. Just outside means here we can apply the formula for the electric field intensity 1 by 4 by epsilon naught into 2 by r square. We have this formula. So that is equal to we can place for this value 9 into 10 to the power of 10. Anywhere you can place 1 by 4 by epsilon naught is equal to 9 into 10 to the power of 9. 9 into 10 to the power of 9 into the charge he has given. How much charge he has given? Q is equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 7 coulombs. So, into 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 7 coulombs by R square. R he has given how much? Radius of 12 centimeters. 12 centimeters means 12 into 10 to the power of minus 2 meters. We have to convert it. So, 12 into 10 to the power of minus 2 into 12 into 10 to the power of minus 2. Why? Because R square. R square. So, by solving that mathematical equation, we will get 10 to the power of 5 newton per coulomb. 
Jotan pa full. Jotan pa full. We can solve this easily. Why? Because 10 to the power of root minus 2, 10 to the power of minus 2 becomes 10 to the power of minus 4. And here we can bring that one to the numerator and we can solve that one. We will get 10 to the power of 5 Newton per Coulomb. And for the third question, at a particle 18 centimeters from the center of the sphere. For this also, uh, the same charge 2 is equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 7 coulombs but the harm he has given 18 centimeters that is equal to 18 into 10 to the power of minus 2 meters so by substituting the equation in the equation 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into 10 into q by r square 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught is equal to 9 into 10 to the power of 9 into q is 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 7 by half square 18 into 10 to the power of minus 12 whole square. So by solving this equation we will get 4.4 into 10 to the power of 4. 4.4 into 10 to the power of 4 newtons per coulomb. So this is the problem related to the electric field intensity. Effect of a dielectric on charge energy stored. Already I told you about the energy stored in a capacitor. We have got, we got the, some equations. And also if the dielectric is introduced, that means if uh, the battery is disconnected, battery is disconnected and a dielectric slab is introduced between the plates of the capacitor. Then what is the uh, effect? What is the effect it shows? Actually, uh, in the starting, if the battery is there, then the capacitor of the capacity is, it will, it will, have, it will have some capacity it, which is charged using a battery, which is charged using a battery. So, when it is charged using a battery, the charge of that, one, that capacitor is, that the charge is Q and also of capacitance C0 and also have potential V0 and related to these we have here equations also Q is equals to C0 into V0 C0 into V0 and also we have for the equations uh, uh, and also uh, for the energy also we will have u naught is equals to O C naught. These are the equations related to these. When the battery is after charging after the after charging it, if the battery is disconnected, if the battery is disconnected, then what happens if a dielectric slab of dielectric constant K is dielectric constant K is introduced dielectric constant K is introduced for this one this battery is disconnected then what is the what is its effect uh, then what happens is uh, now the capacity of the capacitor what happens to the capacity of the capacitor it becomes k times we have already this equation c is equals to k c naught now what uh, what happens to the potential we is the potential difference across the capacitor potential across capacitor. For the potential difference we have the formula V is equals to Q by C. V is equals to Q by C. Then it becomes how much it becomes? Kc naught. So that is equals to uh, K is, uh, 1 by K into Q by C naught. 1 by K into Q by Naught, which is equals to the new potential V naught by 
K, K naught by K. So from this equation, V naught is equals to Q by C naught. The charge remains constant. The charge remains constant. So V naught by Q. Then what about the uh, energy stored? Energy we have the equation Q square by two C naught. Q square by two C naught. And after disconnecting the battery, U is equals to Q square by 2C and now after introducing the dielectric Q square by 2 into K C naught that is equals to 1 by K into U naught so U naught by K so what is the result here the new potential the new potential difference is V naught by K and uh, the new energy is u naught by k we got for this. So the energy stored is reduced by a factor k to its original value. What happened? It is reduced by k times. That means it is reduced by a factor of k to its original value. To its original value. So v is reduced to how, how much factor how, how much is reduced by a factor of k by a factor of k by introducing a dielectric if the battery is disconnected if the battery is disconnected so that is the effect of dielectric uh, on the energy stored in a capacitor if the battery is disconnected if the dielectric is introduced and next one is now if a battery if battery is not disconnected by not disconnecting the battery if a dielectric is introduced if a dielectric is introduced what happens is actually if a uh, if battery is connected then it will have a cap the capacitor will be charged by connecting to a battery and it will have some capacity c naught capacity that means the capacitance c naught and potential difference will be v naught and also the energy stored will be equals to u naught is equals to half c naught v naught square half c naught v naught square then if, a, if without disconnecting the battery if a dielectric uh, uh, if a dielectric slab is introduced of dielectric constant k is introduced of dielectric constant k then what happens the capacitance will be if dielectric is introduced dielectric is introduced dielectric k is of dielectric constant k is introduced then what happens to the capacity the capacity will be, will be equals to k into c naught k into c naught so u is equals to half k c naught v naught square that is equals to half k into c naught v naught square is equals to half k into K into half C naught V naught square that is equal to K into U naught. So what happens if the battery is not disconnected? Then if the dielectric is introduced into it, if a dielectric is introduced, and after that also the battery, if it is not disconnected, then the energy stored in the capacitor increases by k times. Increases by k times. How much it increases? It increases by k times. So the energy stored increases by k times to the original value. To the original value. K times increased. K times increased. When the battery is disconnected, then what happens? It decreased by a factor of k. Decreased by a factor of k. But now, if the battery is not disconnected, then it is the energy which is stored will be increased by k times. If it is not disconnected, it decreased by a factor of k. If it is not disconnected, then if the dielectric is introduced, then the energy is increased by k times. Okay. 
some important formulae related to this lesson in solving the problems and also for the future uh, for the further uh, chapters also it will be important it will have importance v is equals to 1 by 4 epsilon not into 1 by 4 by epsilon not into q by r this is the formula for the potential at a point potential at a point 1 by 4 by epsilon not into q by r where q is the charge and r is the distance between the s charge and the charge particle and the second one is potential which is equals to work per unit charge w by q work per unit this is the charge this is the work done and the third one is relation between the electric field intensity and the potential e is equals to minus dv by dr where here the minus indicates the decreasing potential e is equals to minus dv by dr and the fourth equation is electric potential due to dipole due to a dipole due to a dipole so due to dipole we can we have the derivation the electric potential due to a dipole this one is due to a point due to point charge at a point charge this is dipole and here p is the dipole moment dipole moment p is the dipole moment and also uh, the next equation is capacity the capacitance is c is equals to q by v c is the capacitance and where q is the charge and v is the potential of that capacitor and we, this is the equation q is equals to c into v also we can use the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor is generally C is equals to epsilon naught into A by D, where epsilon naught is the permittivity of the dielectric used, and A is the area of the plates, and D is the distance between the plates. If a dielectric is used other than the air or a vacuum, then C is equals to K into epsilon naught into A by D, where K is the dielectric constant. Dielectric. constant so some of the important formulas that is so these are the equations related to the parallel combination also for the series combination 1 by c is equals to 1 by c1 plus 1 by c2 plus 1 by c3 now the uh, resultant capacitance reciprocal of res resultant capacitance is equals to the reciprocal of the individual capacitances so we have we will have an equation for the series combination in series combination actually we will have the charge is constant in series combination the charge is constant is constant charge is constant and also for the parallel combination there the what is constant v is constant that means the potential is constant for the parallel combination the parallel combination v is constant also for the series combination we can have the equation for, for the potentials also v is equals to v1 plus v2 plus v3 for this one we will, we will have v is equals to v1 plus v2 plus v3 for the series combination okay and also uh, for the parallel combination we, we can have q is equals to q1 plus q2 plus q3 this formula also can be used these formulas can also be used in uh, for the problems if it is necessary actually uh, you will have in the examination generally these formulas can be used but if he asks uh, in the form of this one this one also can be used v is for the series combination v is equals to v1 plus v2 plus v3 and for the parallel combination q is equals to q1 plus q2 plus q3 where for the series combination q is constant this point you must have to remember and for the parallel combination the potential is constant the 
these are the important points for the series and the parallel combination this must be you you have to remember this and also for the energy stored in a capacitor we have the equations u is equals to half q into v where q is the charge v is the potential and half q square by c that is equals to half c v square these equations are also very much important for the energy stored in a capacitor and also uh, for solving the equation for solving the problems these are all the formulas you will have uh, and not only that one not only problems maybe he gives some sometimes he gives problems and sometimes he will gives the theory questions and that means the derivations you have um, as the four marks question for the two marks questions the maximum he will gives problem so uh, one two marks question and for one four marks question from this one so you have to prepare well from this one from this lesson you will have total be six marks and also i think no deleted topics from this chapter you didn't have any deleted topics from this chapter actually so all the question answers you have to learn mainly two marks and four marks okay and these are the formulas we have to remember the formulas without any confusion for the electric field intensity and also for the potential the formulas should be nearly equal uh, like that means for for example e is equals to 1 by 4 by epsilon not into 2 by r square <coughs> for the potential 1 by 4 by epsilon not into q by r so don't confuse and for the electric dipole p by r square 1 by 4 by epsilon not the potential for the dipole is 1 by 4 by epsilon not into p by r square so don't confuse for those equations uh, you have to get you have to practice more for the derivations then by practice you will not confuse for those for those derivations so practice well the derivations actually and also as well as the problems also you have to practice problems also mostly you will have mostly problems in the two marks either for the four marks also so and also remember the formulas mainly for the problem if he gives any problem you have to must you have to place must ensure you have to write formula first for the formula you will have one mark and don't forget the units don't forget the units for the you if you forget the units you will cut up the marks okay get okay, right okay students clear my dear senior inter students good morning to all of you welcome to this online english class so in our last period i mean last session we have seen the non detail text the adventures of tom sawyer about the author about the novel and the first chapter let us continue the remaining seven chapters and today let us see the second third and fourth the three chapters as you know there will be a paragraph question in about 10 to 15 lines and a reading comprehension passage we should go through the chapters as far as possible line by line otherwise sometimes it will be difficult to answer uh, the reading comprehension questions if it is somewhat uh, typical or somewhat uh, difficult so why let us see the three chapters today second chapter third chapter and fourth chapter and you see 
in our first chapter we have seen tom sawyer an imaginative character and he is very fond of adventure so his friend huck and joe harper and these two are helping and they become very close and making uh, some kind of adventures in the novel actually this novel is an abridged form for the sake of intermediate second year students then coming to the second chapter i mean we have seen in the first chapter tom was a funny and adventurous boy and he played some trick on his aunt polly and also on his friends when painting the fence actually he was assigned the work of painting but he made his friends complete the work uh, by playing he the trick so such a very intelligent boy he was and aunt was very happy to see that complete uh, painting work of the fence and she allowed tom to go and play with his playmates huck joe and ben and in the second chapter tom and huck see on saturday it happened i mean the painting of the fence coming to the sunday it was a holiday the next day was sunday it was a holiday and tom wore clean sunday clothes actually he did not like wearing clean clothes he did not like going to school he did not like attending church prayer also so his brother sit and sister mary all of them went to sunday school but tom was not good as a good student and he never listened to the teachings of the teacher after sunday school tom and his total family went to church on the way he caught a small black beetle an insect and kept in his pocket and he wanted to play with it in the church actually so they went to the church and church prayer was going on very seriously the reverend was uh, continuously talking about jesus and the prayer was going on he took out the beetle from his pocket and put it on the floor at the time there was a dog in the church it came near the beetle and it started playing with it the beetle bit the dog on its nose so the dog started barking and it ran away here and there making a lot of fuss and noise the people in the church were very much disturbed actually they did not feel disturbed and they laughed silently their faces were red they uh, the reverend continued his prayer but no one listened in the church tom was happy and he was enjoying uh, this happened in the church so it was the morning and the whole day he spent with his friends and aunt was very particular about keeping him at home and the next day it was monday monday morning he was going to school actually he woke up late because he did not like to go to school aunt polly uh, cried asked him to get up early and go to school he got ready and on his way he met huck his friend huckleberry finn huck was the son of a drunkard his father was a drunkard and he did not work his father did not take care of huck huck was a very careless boy he did not go to school he did not dress up he did not uh, dress up properly and his uh, mother was no more he lived in the streets he did not go to church also he was very careless so every mother in the towns of uh, st petersburg hated him but the children were very happy to see him because he was very free and he didn't have any school or any other kind of jobs so the boy always found 
looked very dirty he always wore unfit clothes i mean the rags and that was his life in the town of st petersburg huck was uh, happy with his life though the mothers did not like the children liked him sometimes the children were very jealous of uh, huck's life because he had freedom and he was enjoying his life so tom was his close friend and they were very happy see all the mothers in the village hated but huck was very happy the children were very much admired so on the way to school our tom happened to see huckleberry finn with a dead cat he was having a dead cat with him our tom asked what for this he answered that it would be used to call the ghost from the graveyard so tom was also uh, very happy to find it and huck told him huck invited our tom to come along with him to the graveyard that night to invite the ghosts and talk to them tom was also interested so they decided to go to graveyard that night huckleberry finn would come and invite him at about 11 o'clock so our tom would be very uh, curiously waiting for him see actually tom was also interested so he asked him can i come with you asked tom of course you could come asked i mean said our huckleberry finn so they were not afraid of ghosts of course not afraid of ghosts and he agreed to go to the graveyard that night so because of this tom was very late to school the teacher became very angry he repeated it is not the first time he often repeated he often went to school very late uh, the teacher was not happy so thomas sawyer actually tom sawyer's full name is thomas sawyer a teacher became angry and called him thomas sawyer again late and you are uh, not allowed to class so you are punished the punishment is to, to sit beside a girl there was a new girl she was becky thatcher the daughter of the judge she was very beautiful she was very cute girl tom looked at her and just at first sight he fell in love with the girl he was also interested and he was very much admired and he wanted to go and sit beside that girl so very immediately he went and sat beside the girl they had a very good time in the school in the classroom so they chatted they enjoyed the class tom thought uh, i stop to talk to huckleberry finn he said to the teacher but the teacher was angry and he punished him to sit beside the girl so tom was also very happy uh, the children in the class always laughed at tom because of his late coming and the teacher's anger over him so he sat down beside the girl and they were very happy tom and becky were very happy so tom put the picture in front of her what he drew she liked it and she asked him to teach her the way of drawing he also promised to teach her the drawing after the school the girl said that she could not draw i can i can teach you after school tom said oh thank you the girl said becky thatcher i know your name it's tom sawyer so he introduced himself with the girl and that night tom was very eagerly waiting for the call of huckleberry finn to go to the graveyard and call the ghosts with the help of the dead cat already they have planned it so tom and sid were lying down in the bed but at about half past 9 9:30 very soon uh, sit went to sleep but at 11 o'clock happy very fin came and gave a signal mewing by mewing he dressed quickly our tom 
and went out through the window. So they whispered that, uh, taking the dead cat, they went to the graveyard. Tom and Huck walked down the dark road. They walked for about half an hour and they reached the grave. It was on a hill. There were a lot of trees and a lot of graves. I mean, dead bodies were buried there. Everything was dark and scary. There would be a deep darkness. The wind was strange and a different kinds of noises and dark clouds covered the moon. Are the ghosts making these noises? It was the doubt of Tom because he was afraid that he was uh, afraid of some ghosts. He said nothing. Now let's find the grave of Horse Williams. Horse Williams died just a few days ago and he was buried in that graveyard. So they reached the grave of Horse Williams. They found the grave and they reached it. And do you think Horse Williams can hear us? By using the dead cat, they wanted to uh, call Horse Williams spirit. So Huck said that Horse Tom uh, Williams would not come, but his ghost would answer and it would come out. All right, said Huck. But everybody called him Horse. So they called it. They called the dead body. I mean, Horse. What's it, Tom asked Huck? Do you hear the noise? Suddenly, there was a very big noise, a strange noise from uh, the grave. And they were a little bit afraid of that noise, strange noise. And, oh, it was some kind of strange noise. At first, they were afraid. Then they understood what it might be. So there ends the second chapter, Tom and Huck. And now let us see the brief summary of Tom and Huck, the second chapter. See, it was a Sunday. Tom hated wearing clean clothes and going to school, especially going to Sunday school. So after Sunday school, they went to church. He had a black beetle, an insect in his pocket. When prayer service was seriously going on, he put the beetle on the floor and that beetle bit the dog in the church and the dog played with it for some time. Because of beating, biting, the beetle bit the dog's nose. So the dog started barking and roamed in the church and it was a great noise in the church. Tom enjoyed this very interestingly. It was an interesting morning to him. Next day, Tom was interested to go to school, not interested to go to school. But aunt cried, woke him up. He started going. And Huck was there on the way with a dead cat. Tom asked him what far the dead cat was. Huck said it was only to call the dead bodies, I mean the ghosts, out of the graves. So Huck told the plan of going to graveyard and calling or inviting the ghosts. Tom also interested in it. Tom reached the school late because of meeting uh, Huckleberry Finn. So the teacher was angry. There was a punishment to sit beside a new girl. I mean, beside the girl. So he looked at a new girl, pretty girl, cute girl. She was Becky. So very immediately he went and sat beside the girl. The whole class laughed at him because it was a routine thing. He always came late and got some kind of punishment and sat beside the girls. It was a thing happened again and again at school. I mean, in his class, the friends were uh, always laughing at him that night. Actually, they became very close friends in the class. Becky and uh, our Tom became very close friends. Uh, he At once, he fell in love with a girl because of her beauty. And she also fell in love with this boy. So they became very close friends, romantic friends. So that night, Huckleberry Finn came at 11 o'clock and invited our Tom. Tom also uh, was very curiously waiting to go to grave graveyard. The two went to the graveyard and they were in search of um, a grave. And they went, they reached the grave of Williams. And they were almost trying to call the 
ghost of Williams, but suddenly they heard some kind of strange noise and that haunted them. They were afraid of the strange noise. At first they thought there were ghosts in the grave, graveyard. Actually they were not ghosts and they found they were not ghosts and they were the men from the same town, St. Petersburg. So it is the summary of chapter 2. So in the chapter, in this chapter we have come to know that they are waiting for some kind of adventurous thing. So it would happen in third chapter. Let us go to the third chapter. The third chapter is the graveyard, the complete scene, the complete happening. It completely uh, in the graveyard. They were very much afraid of the three ghosts coming close to the grave of Williams. Actually, they were not ghosts. Huck said, ghosts. I can see ghosts. They are coming over here. I am really scared. Can ghosts see us? Asked Tom. Ghosts can see everything. But people like us cannot see everything. But Tom, don't be afraid of. We must be very quiet and said Tom. The three ghosts moved quietly in the graveyard. They came close to Tom and Huck. They were hiding behind the bush and they whispered they are not ghosts they are humans actually they were they are dr robinson injun jo the villain and muff potter a drunkard the three came to the graveyard in search of dead body actually the young dr robinson was always in demand of or he would be asking for dead bodies to continue use, uh, to continue his searching i mean research over the dead bodies and find something in his profession they are the grave robbers often they come to the graveyard and rob the dead bodies it was for the sake of doctor so in this task our muff and Injun Joe helped him by taking money. The three men were at the grave of Horse William, who died just two or three days ago. But suddenly, they digged the, they opened the grave and they found the dead body of Williams, Horse Williams. But they were about to take the dead body. At the time, Muff demanded for extra money to bring the dead body to the house of doctor. Injun Joe also demanded the same. So, a uh, light conflict started among the three. Suddenly, the doctor hit Muff Potter. Muff Potter fell fainted. So, Injun Joe was waiting for a chance. Immediately, he took the knife of Muff Potter and stabbed Dr. Robinson. Let us see here. I want more money, Dr. Injun Joe. Already Muff Potter demanded, Injun Joe also demanded. Once Injun Joe asked for something but he did not give, it was the grudge. So, Injun Joe took the doctor's arm and the doctor hit Injun Joe, fell to the ground. Injun Joe and Muff Potter, both of them fell to the ground, but Injun Joe very immediately got up and took the knife off Muff Potter and stabbed him. Robinson was collapsed to the ground over the um, Muff, over Muff Potter on the head. Muff fell to the ground. Injun Joe took Muff's knife. He saw Muff on the ground and he killed Robin, Dr. Robinson with his knife. I mean Muff's knife. The doctor fell on the top of Muff and covered him with blood. Injun Joe looked at the two men on the ground. So this was the thing happening. Actually, Injun Joe took the knife of 
muff potter and killed dr robinson the two boys were tom and huckleberry finn both of them saw it very clearly first he robbed the dead doctor then he put the bloody knife into muff's right hand so now whoever looks at the scene very clearly believe that muff potter killed the doctor because there was a knife in his right hand it was the plan of injun jo a violent villain a few minutes passed and muff moved a little and opened his eyes and he woke up and he found there was a knife in his right hand and he saw there was a dead body of doctor injun jo made muff potter believe that muff potter stabbed dr robinson muff also believed because he was in intoxication and he drank much of whiskey that night so he also believed that by mistake he killed dr robinson now muff potter begged the doctor not to reveal i mean muff potter begged in junjo the villain not to reveal this to anyone in the town in junjo also promised that he would not so they left the graveyard leaving the dead body of dr robinson when muff moved in junjo came back and left the knife of muff potter at the dead body to make people believe that the doctor was killed by muff potter it was the plan of doctor now the two boys were very much afraid of what happened and they were shocked and surprised actually they came to talk to the dead bodies i mean the uh, ghosts but something different happened so this incident haunted them like anything they were very much disturbed and now if you see muff also begged him and he also promised that he would not reveal tom and huck were very much terrified it was a terrible scene they silently moved away from the trees they ran out of the graveyard and back to the village i mean st petersburg town they arrived at an old house and decided to hide there for some time what are we going to do what can we do we saw everything injun jo killed the doctor what can we do can we reveal the secret to everyone in the town or keeping in silence so injun jo is a very cruel very wild villain so they were very much afraid of this dangerous fellow they promised each other i mean tom and huck not to reveal to anyone else in the town so i am afraid of him huck said tom said he too and do you want a knife in your heart i am afraid of injun jo too tom said so you are right we can't tell anyone about injun jo who killed the doctor promise not to tell anyone said huck i promise tom said so this is the end of the graveyard and look at this third chapter the picture how the doctor is hitting the two it is the graveyard you see the two boys were hiding behind the tree and they were uh, watching what's going on and this is the picture and then when you see the summary of third chapter tom and huck saw three people in the graveyard they were not ghosts first they thought they were ghosts actually they were not ghosts they were injun jo the villain muff potter the drunkard and dr robinson actually they came to the graveyard to rob the dead body of williams the young doctor wanted to do research on the dead body the three quarreled over the deal of money they demanded extra money for carrying the dead body of williams to doctor's house the doctor was not ready to give so a small fight among the three a conflict the doctor first hit muff and injun jo then 
both of them fell down injunjo uh, got up immediately and took the knife of muff potter and stabbed doctor so doctor was killed he fell down on the body of muff muff potter was uh, in unconscious mood he fainted injun took muff's knife and stabbed the doctor the doctor fell on muff's die uh, muff and died injun put the knife into muff's right hand this is the turning here it is the twist here you see the uh, villain i mean injun jo's plan he took the knife of muff actually injun jo killed him but he took the knife of muff and put it in his right hand so it seems that in uh, i mean muff potter killed the doctor muff was in drunken state and believed the words of jo that muff killed doctor he himself killed doctor because he was in drunken state actually he was ignorant he was innocent muff begged him not to reveal this to anyone in the town injun promised and left the knife at doctor's dead body and left the graveyard tom and huck were very much afraid of this terrible scene the doctor was killed by injun jo and they were afraid of revealing the secret to anyone else because they were afraid of that dangerous jo he was a dangerous man so he may kill these two also if the truth is revealed so this is the second third chapter the grave yard and shall we go to the fourth chapter the fourth chapter is actually somewhat adventurous one jobson's island so st petersburg town is very near the river mississippi there is a small island in the river mississippi that is jobson's island and chapter 4 is jobson's island let us see what is happening in jobson's island how the three boys i mean tom huck and joe and how they enjoyed in the island what happened let us see each and everything is in this chapter so the next day everyone came to know about the poor dr robinson's murder in the graveyard so they found muff potter's knife beside the dead body so it was crystal clear to everyone the doctor was stabbed or killed by muff potter so he was arrested and thrown into st petersburg small jail tom and huck looked at each other because of this actually they saw they were the witness the doctor was killed by jo muff didn't kill him poor muff was in jail but they could not reveal this to anyone because jo is very dangerous i am sorry for muff potter the two boys were afraid they felt very sorry but they wanted to keep this a secret and they could not forget this incident what they saw in the graveyard at night the incident haunted and he had very bad dreams i mean tom injun jo and muff potter again and again repeatedly uh, recurring the dream was recurring what happened what they saw he kept the terrible secret but he was not very happy he was very unhappy aunt polly was very much worried about this boy and his health she gave him some medicines but tom was not feeling better he was unhappy at school too becky thatcher did not talk to him there was no one to love our tom what a horrible life he was not happy in his life now summer vacation started no schools tom his friend joe harper and they went to mississippi river they fished talked looked at the boats the whole day they enjoyed very happily and they planned to do some kind of exciting things they planned they wanted to go to jobson's island and do some kind of tasks 
I mean, they wanted to pretend as pirates and they wanted to rob the uh, treasures hidden by the pirates. So this they planned. And Jackson's Island, I have already told you, is a small island in the Mississippi River. It was about three miles away from the town, St. Petersburg. There was no one, nobody lived in that island. It was a deserted place. Huckleberry Finn also joined. All the three went to the island. So remember, Joe, don't tell your mother, father, and anyone about our adventure. So they wanted to go to that island, the three boys, without telling the parents at home. So they went. Tom brought some meat from home to eat there. Joe brought some bread, Huckleberry Finn, a prying pawn. So they found a small raft and they went to the island by the raft. They reached the island. When they arrived on the island, they made a fire and cooked some food. I mean, they, they cooked meat and ate some bread. They enjoyed very happily. They were very free. We are free and we can do everything we want, said Tom. What do pirates do? Asked Huck. They go on ships and take money. They rob the passengers. They hide the money or treasure somewhere in the island. And they live very freely, happily. Hide it in a safe place. The three boys were happy and slept under the stars very happily. The next morning, they went swimming in the river. When they went for fishing, uh, they found something. So they cooked the fish and fire and ate. It was very delicious. It was a very happy life for them. So they were very happy. They were enjoying the life of um, adventurous life. So it was very delicious. After breakfast, they were, walked around in the island and they went for swimming. But in the afternoon, once again, they started fire and they ate some meat. Suddenly, Tom said, Oh, do you hear something? Some kind of noise. Yes, they heard some strange noise. They found an engine boat and small boats. They were in search of every boat was in the river Mississippi. And all the boats were, I mean, the steamboat and all other small boats. They were all in search of the dead bodies. Jocksons in the Mississippi River. Every boat from St. Petersburg is out on the river. What's happening? They are looking for a dead body. Actually, they were looking for a dead body and whose bodies they were looking for. It was a surprising thing. So the same thing happened last summer when Bill Turner fell into the river and drowned and there was there were so many boats in search of the body. Who are they looking for? For whose bodies they were looking for? Asked Joe. Tom thought for a moment and said, it was, they think, I mean, the people of St. Petersburg thought that these three boys drowned in the Mississippi River and the townsmen were in search of the three boys, dead bodies. The three boys were like heroes and they laughed. They were very happy, yes. There was a great happiness for them. They became heroes. So when they're alive, all the people in the town, St. Petersburg, thought that they were dead and they were in search of the dead bodies. So it was a very adventurous thing for the people, for the boys there. The people of St. Petersburg are looking for us. They're talking about us, uh, said Tom happily. This was an exciting adventure for Tom. So, actually, they wanted to do this kind of exciting adventures. So, Tom, Huck and Joe, they were very happy. They pretended like pirates on Jackson's Island. The boats and the steamboat went away because they didn't find the bodies. Actually, they didn't die. They are happy in the island of Jackson's Island. The boys went fishing again and they had fish for dinner. They ate. They slept under the stars. So... They were very happy. But our Tom, 
the protagonist is not very happy he did not go to sleep he could not go to sleep he remembered his uh, aunt so secretly without letting the two i mean huck and zo he went to the town seat saint petersburg and reached his house and saw what's there actually the next morning he was not there because he went to saint petersburg joe and our huckleberry finn they were asking where is tom asked joe i don't know said huck after a few minutes huck said looks like tom went swimming in the river they thought our huck our tom went to the river side he is coming to the island now tom told told them the complete story the last night the previous night he did not go to sleep sorry he could not go to sleep so he went to st petersburg and saw aunt polly aunt polly was crying very terribly for our tom i saw aunt polly and also joe's mother joe's parents were also very unhappy they were crying they were very much mourning for or weeping for joe as aunt polly poor aunt polly was crying a lot and joe's mother was very sad too everyone in the town including the parents relatives everyone in the town thought they are dead they means the three boys huck tom and joe i had some other interesting and very surprising thing what is it what did you hear huck asked very surprisingly very curiously there will be a funeral for us on sunday at the church for us means tom huck and joe so they decided that the three are dead and they are going to uh, celebrate they are going to uh, arrange a funeral on sunday so this is the surprising thing and now i have a great idea listen tom revealed tom told her that they wanted to go to the town and present before the parents very surprisingly so they liked it and laughed and now see sunday was the day of the funeral everybody was in unhappy mood and they were with uh, unhappy faces in saint petersburg a small church there was a small church in the village on poly said mary jo harper's family they were all in black dress morning dress the reverend said many kinds of many kind of words about the three boys they praised they saw i mean very unhappy they looked very unhappy the boys family is cried and cried becky also cried very much everyone in the town cried a lot and they were very sorry for the deaths of the three boys especially tom and zo there was no one to cry for or weep for our huckleberry finn because he was almost a what you can say a parentless boy though there was a father he was always in drunken state he was a drunk boy there was a great silence for a moment when the three boys present before the uh, church the aunt polly mary mother ran to the boys they kissed tom and joe aunt polly cried and then laughed she was very happy to see uh, tom again over huck nobody was there to receive him to invite him nobody was there to kiss him he started to move away but tom stopped him tom explained aunt polly it's not right someone should go and receive her also so our aunt polly she went and hugged the boy huckleberry finn and kissed him and tom was very proud of his great idea so that is tom's uh, intelligence then the reverend said let's sing and be happy everyone sang and laughed it was a very happy day because they thought the three boys were dead but they returned very safely 
all the people were very happy. The whole town of St. Petersburg was very happy. That's the thing. And that is the end of the chapter 4. And when we see the summary, once again, you see a gist. The next day, the news of the doctor's death spread the whole town. People came to know that Muff Potter killed the doctor because the evidence, because Muff Potter's knife was beside the doctor. Actually, Muff Potter was ignorant of the uh, killing, the murder, but everybody thought so. It was the plan of Injun Joe keeping the knife of Muff beside the doctor. So, Immediately, Muff was arrested and thrown into prison. It was a small jail in the town of St. Petersburg. Tom and Huckleberry Finn could not digest it. They were very unhappy to look at the arrest of Muff Potter. They were very sorry. So this incident, the terrible scene, the terrible incident haunted Tom and he became very unwell. He became unwell. Aunt Gave was very much worried about the health of our Tom. She gave medicines, but Tom was not feeling better. He had many dreams, terrible dreams. Again and again, the dreams, what he saw there in the graveyard. And he thought about the villain Joe. He would be very, very, very dangerous fellow. So next day, summer vacation started. So no schools. Tom was happy. Tom and Joe went to the river, swam, enjoyed. They fished. It was a happy day for them. For some time they were happy. And Huck also joined. They planned to go to Johnson's Island as pirates. So it was the plan. And they did not want to tell the people I mean, their parents, anyone in the town, they wanted to go very secretly into the Jackson's Island and they wanted to cook meat and they wanted to rest. They wanted to enjoy. They wanted to feel happy, free there. It was the plan of the three boys. So they secretly reached St. Jackson's Island. So they reached the island by the raft, a small raft. So they took something from home to prepare and eat there. The next day they saw an engine boat, I mean steamboat, and many small boats in search of the dead bodies in the river Mississippi. So in the Johnson's Island, they were very happy. They cooked food, they cooked meat, they cooked fish, they swam, they played, they enjoyed. So they were very, very happy about their exciting life there. So they came to know that the steamboat and small boat boats were in search of the dead bodies of the three boys that night. Our Tom could not sleep. So he wanted to go and see what's actually happening in the town. He reached his home and saw Aunt Polly was crying. She was crying very much. That night, Tom went to St. Petersburg in secret. He came to know that their parents thought they were dead. So the parents planned for their dead children's funeral also on Sunday. So he returned to the island, Jackson's Island, and he shared the news to the remaining two boys, I mean, Joe and Huck. They felt very, very excited. And they were very happy and they felt like heroes because of this adventurous thing. And they planned to alight before the church on Sunday when they were, uh, I mean, in the funeral. They wanted to give surprise to the parents and they wanted to appear before the parents on Sunday in church. So parents were very unhappy. They were in funeral. But... Suddenly, when they appeared before them, they happily received the two children, the parents of Tom and Joe Harper. But there was no one to receive our Huckleberry Finn because he had no mother. 
father was a drunkard but tom asked on polly to receive him to kiss him on polly hugged and kissed him hug felt very happy so this is the end of chapter 4 so we have seen the three chapters today chapter 2 chapter 3 and 4 so what we have seen the boy tom was very adventurous very happy to be in the island but what's the exciting thing here they saw a murder in the graveyard but they could not reveal the secret to anyone because of the dangerous fellow injuncho injuncho was a very dangerous fellow if he knew that the two boys revealed certainly he would kill the boys so why because of uh, injuncho's villainous nature they did not like to reveal so they planned they planned to go to jackson island i mean the three boys they went and they enjoyed they felt very happy so when they came to know that the town's men were in search of the dead bodies of the three boys they felt very much excited and they felt just like heroes and they were the um, very happy free boys in the jackson island so they returned to st petersburg town on sunday and suddenly gave surprise to the parents and they stopped the funeral and the reverend praised them and they sang very happy songs and this ended very happily now my dear children senior inter my dear boys let us see the remaining four chapters in the next class afterwards let us see the paragraph questions and reading comprehension passage until then you uh, read the four chapters chapter 1 2 3 4 line by line so that you will be in a position of answering all the questions i mean reading comprehension questions very easily so read the text and enjoy the story never think that it is for the examinations it is just for the examinations and for the examination sake so you first enjoy the story enjoy the adventurous nature of the boy you enjoy the development of the story then automatically you can answer uh, well in the examinations so with this let us end the session and let us meet again in the next session it will be continued thank you thank you very much stay safe and stay blessed thank you namaste